Hi there, it's Tommy from TechNexus and thanks for joining me for a new year and uh, Merry Christmas and Happy New Year uh, and all of that kind of stuff for the new decade if you're considering 2020 to be the new decade. So for the first video for, for this year, I just wanted to have a look at some of the changes that came in late last year with Infoworks. There was a, uh, a dot release update that came through and you can see the basically the GUI, the, the, the graphical user interface has changed. There used to be uh, little round icons here that used to slide in and out over here on the left. Um, and there was some, some toolbar stuff up here, but now you can see it's all pretty much changed to uh, kind of a, a palette kind of arrangement or a ribbon kind of arrangement like most of the other Autodesk and even Microsoft kind of products as well. So we've got manage, create, analyze and present slash share for the ribbon at the top there. Um, we've got some view display options, selection options, uh, measurement options, other just sort of application options, any scripts or uh, anything that, that is sort of, I guess, to do with the application here, plus um, all the bookmarks. Um, the design options are listed here and then I guess the uh, the view options so conceptual engineering view so I think uh, from memory these were sort of more at the top here if we look at the top right we've got undo redo full screen mode the application options are up here so we if you need to find things like um, the user interface options what do you need to do with the point clouds any other uh, things you need to do in there and this B icon is the BIM 360 icon and in the previous release I think it was up here on the left hand side there was a, another sort of little ribbon up here on the left so this has got to do with the BIM 360 side of things plus um, the account options uh, are up here on the right hand side now we're going to just have a quick step through each of the four ribbons up here. So under the Manage tab, uh, we've got we still got the model properties up there, so you can see the extent and the, the coordinate system and uh, what road design standards, whether we're driving on the left or the right hand side of the road. The Model Explorer and the Proposal. So the Proposals button is here on the left, which opens up the Proposal palette, and plus as well, we've got the Proposal options up there as well. If we go to look to the pull down model properties, uh, proposals. So you've got the same thing there. Those three buttons there are basically in the fly out there. Up here, we've got data sources. So where you need to add uh, extra data and the style palette and the ArcGIS connector. And again, we've got that down here, except there's an extra option here for the drainage parts editor. Uh, I don't have uh, Inventor loaded, so I can't really go through that editor. But uh, if you do, you can make your own drainage parts in there. Display options, so surface layers, terrain themes and feature themes. And again, same thing here, sun and sky. Uh, if you, if you want to throw um, some analysis in there, let's see if we've got something that I can present. So under display, if we switch to sun and sky, so you can see here I can adjust uh, the date and time. So that's all listed under the display tab. And the point clouds tab, themes, point cloud terrain and linear feature extraction are all listed under here plus any other um, uh, buttons in here as well. The main part you probably spend a lot of time in is under the create tab. So creating roads, planning roads, barriers, and any other transport options, structural options. And I mean that more in, as in a, a sense of a structures, not structural detailing like you do with event steel, but just the, the infrastructure kind of structure. So bridges, tunnels, and any other buildings. So you can see here if I wanted to add a another building. Oops. So again, same functionality as before, just in a, in a different uh, area of the tool palette there, okay. And under the flyout, so bridges, tunnel buildings, and even just generic objects as well. Drainage, all of the drainage options, culverts, pipelines, pipeline connectors, and the environment. So the first one, city furniture, points of interest, or coverage areas. Um, but again, under the flyout, you'll find that most of the environment stuff is all still in their parcel, yeah, suitability maps, uh, and all that kind of bizarre. Under the analysis tools, 
So transportation analysis, so profile and corridor optimization, traffic simulation, which apparently now doesn't require cloud credits. It's all done locally on your local PC, so you don't have to send it to uh, the cloud. Site distances is in there and mobility simulation. More uh, information for analysis for the structures, so line girder analysis, so if we're doing that on bridges, which uh, we might, might cover in the next couple of weeks. Just as a side note, and same thing for the drainage. Uh, analysis there, so watershed, uh, drainage networks, um, any other sort of rainfall content, all that kind of stuff as well. And present and share. So I know I did a video a while ago on making up some videos and storyboards. So this is all listed under the present slash share icon here. So the storyboard creator, again, same thing. Uh, looks like this is that same one. So if I press play, there you go. So we've got some, some other um videos in there looks like that's yeah that's the leftover one that, that i had from my youtube video as well there uh the player any other watermarks any snapshots i want to want to create so i can just uh create a um uh, jpeg image of of this this sort of screen as well and any any screen uh launching the screencast as well so um i'm not using the screencast at the moment i'm using obs studio but uh you do have the option there to do a screencast and then sharing your model so exporting out the 3d model in imx uh or an fdgb format or publishing back to arc gis uh in there as well okay and over here on the right hand side, we've got the profile view button. So if I select the road, I can click on that and look at the profile view. So you can see here, I can just zoom in and out and I can adjust uh, the values from that profile view like before, nothing different's really changed there. The selection tools, we're all here, zoom to selected. So if I click on that, it'll take me straight to that road. I've got some measurement tools here. So it's kind of like that set square kind of icon. So point to point, path, range finder, terrain statistics, or 2D distance and slope. So if I do terrain statistics on this area here, you can see it's gonna give me some cut and fill values in there and, and the volume net as well. So uh, again, they've all changed from, from the icons over here on the right hand side. Uh, like I said before, all the application options are over here, plus any of the bookmarks and any of the proposals as well in there. Okay, so thanks for watching. Hopefully it's been uh, quite informative for you to, to know and to realize that uh, the interface has changed with the latest update of Infoworks, which came out late last year. Um, and I'm guessing they're probably gonna stick with this for a while until um, something else needs to change in the software but for now uh, those little uh, round bubble icons have gone and we are uh, like I said similar to other, the other Autodesk products we've gone to this sort of uh, ribbon and palette kind of look here as well so again thanks for watching thumbs up if you like the video thumbs down if you didn't but please do subscribe to the channel uh, and I'll see you next week for some more videos I think we might maybe stick with infoworks for the month um, have a look at bridges and tunnels and maybe making up some some road styles as well with these component roads but again thanks for watching uh, and I'll catch you next week for some more videos see you later